small introduction, guys. Thank yeah. you so much for coming today. My name is Numa. I'm from uh, School Admin. Uh, we would like to welcome Mr. Hassan. He's a cinematographer, being photographer's report. So before we start, uh, just, uh, just give them a small introduction about our school. We are Rain Dance Film School, a British school which has three branches. Uh, uh, originally in UK, Dubai, and Mexico. We teach purely film making, yes, but uh, also with the screen acting uh, specialization. And we have HND program, which is high national diploma. We also have short courses, and we do host a lot of talks like this. Uh, what we are having today. So, I will let you just go because you're tired. You, you know my name, I'm Hassan. Uh, I got introduced to you. Adam. Can you tell me briefly uh, what are you interested in? What are you doing right now? Oh, um, I'm here to start the acting in year one. Acting? Yeah. Nice. Very nice. You. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Louis. I completed my first year, now going into my second year here at the Yeah. Nice. Uh, filmmaking, I've been you know, doing filmmaking, and recently I saw I got an acceptance to the shelter from the festival. Very nice, very yes. nice. Cool. Uh, my name is Parsa, and uh, so I'm um, second year filmmaking, and um, yeah, I definitely have to photograph and cinematograph the aspect of it, so nice. I had to come here. Very nice. Uh, my name is Seth, I'm a full time content creator, and uh, we are Troy Fellow, a patient boy. My name is Anandi and uh, I'm just learning video and photography. Okay. I'm tired of just visiting the street in person. Of course, yeah. Same. So we're just awesome. visiting. My name is Bash and I'm just visiting to see the institute. Awesome. Hi, my name is Rasha. I'm an editor and I'm interested into moving into documentary filmmaking. Awesome. Okay. Uh, it was, uh, it was a, a great honor to be here actually because uh, I've been doing this since I was four. I was photography. Yeah, photography was my passion from was four. From my father gave me a camera. What camera? It was it was made in Hong Kong. And it's it's, it's <laughs> nothing, you know. It's not in order and yeah, it's not even. That. But it was like uh, my way to to document my childhood. To, this camera was. I didn't realize this would be my life because uh, actually I graduated first from. That, that's that's where basically the passion. Started. Yeah, yeah, the passion started. And uh, my father, by the way, for irony, my father is blind, so he gave me this to, to document things to, for me to dress up on and for uh, my family. So um, I studied genetics at that college. I graduated from uh, Egypt as an agricultural engineer, specialized in genetics, and I was. Buying and using cameras since like four different cameras, whatever. But I wasn't thinking at all that would be my fate, my career. So uh, in 2007, I graduated and I worked as an engineer for pretty briefly. I got a diploma in database administration and development, which is not related to the to the filmmaking or photography. I worked for five years as communication engineer because I. This in parallel, I was shooting my colleagues. I was working in a, a call center. I was call center agent, the call center team leader. Eventually, uh, and I was while I'm sitting answering the call, I have my camera and I'm shooting portraits. Still, this wasn't it. But in parallel, I was shooting a lot of uh, you know underground uh, gigs and uh, concerts, uh, my friends' weddings, my friends special occasions and blah blah blah. This starts and concurrently uh, Arab Spring happened 2011 and uh, this was something big in our life and uh, I found myself with my camera in the streets and uh, I shot a lot and I, I tell you a very brief story and this was very weird. I applied for some of my photos for a local uh, photo contest in Egypt and my photos got rejected. I didn't lose the rejected or the primary. So, uh, after a few months, the, these specific photos, uh, one CNN best in breaking news report all over the world. After like one year or two, they invited me the same contest to be a jury member. 
And the second, <laughs> and the second I was like, very angry, yeah. That. So um, I was like, on, almost all of you, but uh, a passionate amateur, like uh, self studying, and I was uh, uh, following uh, digital photography school in New York, like, knew that just even YouTube in, back in the days was not that oh, good and powerful as today. 2012, I got the BBC Arabic um, uh, photo contest, I won also, and 2013, BBC CNN. And since then, I resigned from my work for corporate life 2012 as I, to become a freelance photographer. 2016, I joined film school in Egypt, High, high Cinema Institute, and uh, specialized in cinematography, and I got graduated in 2020, and I was the oldest in the in my class. I was 31. And they were like 17 to 22. So uh, uh, basically, I love uh, one quote from Maya Angelou. Do you know, are you familiar with the, She's a great uh, writer. Her quote uh, is about when you know better, you do better. Simply. So, my first, my first ever advice to anyone about from photography to cinematography, whatever you, you will do in your life, know better. Invest in your knowledge, in your learning, in your education. Uh, education may be, sometimes may be boring, but learning is not boring at all. You, you have to, to differentiate between education and learning. You, you will learn uh, while you are uh, on the couch, opening the just YouTube video to do it yourself, uh, kind of lighting, kind of whatever. But education is important. Academia is important. I, I realized this after like, I, I started 2007-2008 to be professional <laughs> To be a professional photographer. Professional means for, for, for the basic, basic, basic uh, definition, to get paid. The first, first time I got paid for my photography was like 100 Egyptian pounds, which is like 20, 25 dirhams. It was like some friend of mine who was colleague and he told me my my wife has vases to to shoot. I, it was product photography. I'm sure it happened a lot so that this friend came here and his wife uh, they kept calling me and my last talk with them I I shot a commercial for uh, American school in charge. Gulf America School of Charge, it was a commercial and it was aired in Las Carmelo. From through the years, the client need evolved. They didn't stop at photography. They, 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 they asked for more. And you have to learn more to, to survive, to adapt. This kind of, um, no, 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 I'm a photographer, I'll still be a photographer. Kind of luxury, we don't have it right now. It's, it's something like uh, I had hard time to, to identify myself as what uh, I'm a photographer and I do my editing, I'm a toucher, I do, uh, I do videography and uh, there's separation between videography and cinematography. Uh, anyone here is familiar for you guys? This, uh, this is a uh, behind the scenes photo from uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino and this book. Is one of the great photographers. The thing is, when um, when you are in this specific interested um, time, a lot of content is being out there. <laughs> so you you feel stressed. You feel like where I am. How can I be in this? How how can I be distinctive? How can I be uh, someone special? People will see my my thing and say that this is uh, Adam, this is Hassan, this is Glenn. The thing is, and um, this is my ultimate uh, thing, that you have to stick to yourself. Uh, the techniques are, are available, but the feelings, you, your own taste, your own style, your own flavor, this is something there is no. There is no other you in the whole world. Never been and never will be. The thing is, when you start to know that what I'm doing, uh, 
a storyteller. I chose this form of art, whatever, photography, cinematography, videography, content creation, you name it, to tell some story. Maybe it's yours, maybe it's the client's, maybe it's whatever, but you're a story, storyteller. And this thing, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's complicated. Some, you, you are not a writer, you can just grab a notebook and pen and follow That's it, done. And you are not a painter. Yeah, it's, it's a very expensive thing. You see, all of these rules are like one hundredth of frame group. This is Bollywood. And Bollywood, Bollywood are the same. Egypt, the same. In this interesting era, we are uh, challenged with mm, oversaturation of uh, creative people. And uh, everyone has a camera. Everyone and his uncle thinks that he is pro, which is controversial. Yeah, yeah. Pro max. Yeah, pro max. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's very challenging when when I ask myself, I have a, a lot of advices, a lot of ideas I, I want to share with you in within one hour. But the most interesting thing. Uh, what is important, what is the most important thing is the image or what? Again, for my angle, she said that people will forget about what you said, will, will forget about what you did, but they will never forget how did you make them feel. So whatever you produce, a photo, a short movie, a reel, on Instagram, something, let them feel something and they will never feel that thing if you are not skillful you, you, you are mastering your skill you are mastering your craft and you feel something in return uh, I'll ask you a quick question what, what's your favorite movie? Hi. you uh, so many no, so many, just one uh, Pulp Fiction Pulp Fiction Nice, um, the first thing that came to my mind was Prince of Egypt. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. the, the animation or? The animation. Yeah, nice. Uh, Shutter or not? Shutter or not. Okay, nice. Uh, Pursuit of Happiness. Oh, so it's one of my favorites too. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Uh, Probably, uh, yeah, just um, Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible. Which, which, uh, episode, which part? Uh, I don't remember because a few of them are things. A lot of actions. Ah, okay. Every every one of these are like. What's your favorite? Mission Impossible. Also. But most for this this guy worked right. I would say Vintage Project. Vintage Project. Okay. Nice. Nice. Interesting choice. Uh, ah, what's the I would say Parasite. Parasite. Very nice. I love it. Good. I love this movie. Yeah. I love it. Uh, Sigma Pagrisum. Sigma Pagrisum. Ah, this is my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. love, uh, love uh, Giuseppe Tornatori and uh, Cinema Police for me with all the nostalgia. Hassan, what's, uh, what's your favorite movie? Maybe Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, I love yeah. it. I love it too. Uh, my favorite is Cinema Police because it, it makes me feel something. Nostalgia about it. Yeah, can, if you want to remember that one, just so I can also fit in with this. Of another live action film. One of my favorite live action films is Pan Sabbath. Ah, sure. Mm. I love uh, Guillermo del Toro. I love his. <laughs> he is very creative. Guillermo mm. del Toro is very creative. And I, the thing is, uh, you know the story about Guillermo del Toro and uh, Enrietto and uh, yeah. Chivo Lubezki. The thing is, every every film, every movie, he leaves you with a memory. With, with, with a feeling, with something. Mm. A lot of blockbuster movie, you go in, you go out by my class. There's no memory, there is no there is nothing. Mm. And they, they, they can cost like two point eight billion dollars and you don't remember any moment, any special moment. But Seno Pradiso is I think Seno Pradiso is as old as me, it's in 1985, 80 something. And still Giuseppe Tornatori and everyone Involved in this film, I, I was 
tracing the work after this. Uh, Ennio Marconi, uh, everyone, because they, 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 they connected to me as human beings. I've never been to Italy, and I hope to go there soon, but it's not about Italy, it's, a, it's about some little boy, He's, he loves this magical thing, it's called cinema, and this story builds, and this story, because it's authentic, because it's true, you can feel it, you can relate. Uh, if, if you think about like, I think, I don't know about you, but I, I still remember the first time ever to watch a movie in movie theater. I was six. I was like, 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 dude, literally, it's like, why they are so big? And why are they so loud? And this magnification of things and, and things that these are photos, these are images. Drinks a bill for me is the, the, the very beginning art. It was like, I don't know about the, the arranging of arts. Of course, in Egypt we name our, all over the world, I think they, they name cinema as the seventh art. Because there's poetry, there's uh, choreography, there's uh, painting and sculpture, you name it. But this cinema, this very late art, gathered all the arts. In, in production design, you will you will find people that they are painting, they are doing um, sculpture and art, architecture. The poetry in image and in the script and music and choreography, etc. The thing is, you have to hold the grasp of the tiny little story that you know. Uh, there is a very, very nice uh, advice I love. Uh, tell the story that you know. Don't tell, for me, don't tell the story that is trendy. Because maybe you are not related to this trend. Uh, because a lot of people are following the trend and they are just in the mainstream and they are not unique. You, you, you will forget about them quickly. But if you made a story, Authentic as Cinema Paradiso, Labyrinth, Labyrinth, or whatever. Even if it's totally fiction, even if it's totally fiction, it's not documentary, it's, it's not based on a true story or whatever. But it, it's something personal, it's something subjective, totally. You will connect to a human being easily. If you are sincere, you will connect. But to find this voice, your own original voice, it's very difficult in a world that every everyone like parents, like friends, do this to a filmmaker, please come and shoot my uh, coffee shop. Come and shoot my my wife doing uh, handmade uh, bracelets. It's fine. We all have bills, we all have <laughs> things to do. But the thing is, do this and don't feel that you are bigger than this that this task at hand, this very specific task like uh, I shoot weddings, I shoot uh, baby showers, I shoot everything. I started like, I told, I told you guys, for 20, 50 dirhams. It's very, very, very small money, but to go there to, to, for your own vision, it needs to go through all of these odd jobs, all of these uh, tasks that, that will teach you a lot, that will teach you techniques, that will teach you what people, what people are expecting from you. Uh, I have like this, uh, I have like 17 pages or something from wording, 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 a lot of quotes, a lot of uh, uh, photos, a lot of um, advices, but the thing is, uh, everyone here in this classroom has a, a unique question. Uh, I, I, I used to be a student and I really didn't like the professor that come and vomit the, 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 the lecture and blah, this I, I, what, what's in it for me? I, 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 don't, I, can, I cannot relate to what, whatever you are saying, but when I was teaching, I tried my best to ask my students that, what is your question? What's that? What's the thing that when you leave this school room, 
with it, you feel that you didn't waste your time with me. You have to, to know that I, I want us in this guy something. What to do when I face that situation, for example? Um, because the, the, the knowledge is very, very, very massive. Yeah. And you have to be very specific to your needs. Because I've been shooting for like 14 years. Shooting maybe 90% of my filmography and uh, body of work shot on camera. But still, in, the, in this camera, or this camera, whatever, things in the, men, in the menu I'll never end. I will never use it. So I, I didn't bother to, to know about it. So if I now here to read the manual of whatever camera, you will not be interested. If you are not into astronomy or whatever, you will not be interested for night, you know, time lapse and night photography and blah blah blah. The other way around, if you are into macro, you will not be interested in the other thing. So everyone here can guide me through your question. Yeah, everyone, I, I mean that the questions are the very leading points to the through the through the path of uh, our career or our life. Because Without questions, well, it's fine. Okay, I know everything, and I'm fine. You will not be here. You will be doing something else. So, anyone here has this irritating question? Is yawning? Is yes. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> Can you talk me about uh, about your pre-production process? Pre-production process. Yeah. Uh, questions. The the the, the very. <laughs> the very best thing ever to ask as many questions as you can because uh, scenario number one a client came to you a client or agency or whatever we need to make a video that's it plus. this is the brief we, we need to make a video and they why they stop talking because maybe they don't want to pay you your worth so you just need a video. They, they want, maybe they don't know what they want. They just need a video. How many minutes? There is the graphics over. There is no graphics. There will be models. There will be voiceover. There will be locations. There will be drone shots. We will need permits. We will need like reality for the music. They will ask a lot of questions for the client. For, the, for, for, the, for me, I've done it. Almost all because sometimes I'm in one man crew. So I go to the client, I ask him or her, I write the script, and uh, I, when I develop the script, I give, okay, but can we do this? Can we undo this? The script is rewritten, it's, it's not ever, never it's written, it's rewritten, rewritten. You write the script and rewrite, rewrite the script, and if this matches the ideas and the, the, the client need, we will proceed. We will agree on everything as much as we can because the, the, <laughs> the sweat and the training will, <laughs> will spare you from the blood and the post production. Because <laughs> when, the, when you finally finalize your project and send it to them and they tell you, you know, this is not what we agreed on and this is, this is not what we want, you will feel yourself like, oh my god. And you will modify and name the file final 2, final 17, final, final, final 27, and you will keep this. So, in, in pre production, try to be creative as you can, try to brainstorm with them, try to um, visualize, pre visualization. Visualize, and if you are into like simple drawing, draw like a very small. Simple storyboard, and after we agreed on the blog line, we agreed on the, the script. Maybe the script is just a couple of paragraphs, one page, and we will okay, we agreed on it. Okay, please put it in paper. This agreements <laughs> put it in paper like email, not verbal, because a lot of clients are like, No, I didn't say that. You, you said that, I didn't say that. So please make a reference make a documentation between these conversations because this will save a lot of time afterwards. So, uh, the client wants a video about something or a photo shoot about something, okay, what do you want? Ask them because, sincerely, 
It's not about you at all. It's about the client. So if the client is happy with the, the value that you gave them, you are a service provider for all. You are a service provider. So you are giving your your um, your everything, your your talent, your passion, your your gear if you are owning your own gear and your time, everything. And if all of this doesn't add proper value to the client, he, he will feel that you ripped him off. Took whatever money, if, even if it's for free, you wasted his time. So, no, exactly, uh, like 70-80% what they want and try to, to make it about them, not about you. Because sometimes people are like, no, no, I will make it my way. Okay. You will make it my, your way and give it to the client, he will throw it back in your face and lose your situation. He, was, he will be upset and pissed off and you will be upset and pissed off and you will not, e yeah, you will not even be able to put it in your portfolio. Because it's not, not approved. He didn't like it. The other way around, if you did this job and you over delivered, if the client wants like one video and you give him one video and a reel or something, or one video and a couple of uh, photos, and photos, and he will be happy. Word of mouth, he will be happy, and his friend, oh, this is beautiful. Who did this for you? Adam did this for me. Okay, he will call Adam. So in, in pre-production, try to. This is a very crucial thing because production is your your gameplay. You you've been practice, 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 and you can try things, but. It's your roadmap. You have a very, very nice car, but you don't have a destination. You will be lost. It's in pre-production. In the, do you, uh, yeah, I love, uh, I love that book for uh, Hitchcock. When they ask them what make, uh, well, what, what makes a very good movie? Script, script, script. He said three things: script, script, script. So in this pre-production thing. You will you will pre-visualize the script into images and this is your roadmap. That's my answer. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Cinematography is a bit hard. <laughs> Look, this man here is the DP, director of photography. And this man here is the first EC, the assistant camera, camera cinematographer assistant. Or maybe this man is a cameraman, camera operator, has another focus puller. Maybe they are operating in like five, six, seven cameras, whatever. And there is in cinematography, guys, you know, I don't know if you know or not, but cinematography has like director of photography in hierarchy and after this cameraman, cameraman, camera woman, camera person. Because <laughs> a lot of my mentors are women uh, in Egypt and I, I love um, Elaine Duvar. A lot of um, creative people in this field were men. I, I've never heard about uh, camera woman or a female DP that got an Oscar for something. I, didn't train the bill. But there is a director of photography, and after this cameraman, and after this focus puller, and I said camera assistants, this cameras, and trainees, and you, you can go to gaffers. The gaffer is the one who is responsible for lighting, and his best boys and his assistant, and blah blah blah, and machinists, the one who are responsible for the dolly track and crane and things, grippers. A lot of teams. This is very difficult. And photography is like, okay, uh, I should like with my mobile, and that's why. Photography is not that easy, but cinematography needs some certain kind of skills. And uh, cinematography is very expensive to learn, very expensive to uh, implement, because these cameras are not owned by this guy, but this mobile belongs to me. I, I, this camera. Is Knows to me that uh, photography cameras are affordable, and you can shoot like whatever you want in digital. It's 
the running cost of digital camera is almost electricity, nothing. But the running cost of this, <laughs> you have to hire all of these people and rent the camera, rent the gear, rent whatever to do something. And it's it's um, back in the days, but in the film stock days, because I studied in Egypt, we have like the last days of raw analog. These reels, the film roll was very expensive, and the film cameras were very exclusive to production houses, rental houses, and film institutes. But in these days, everyone and his uncle has a mobile phone. You can do it. But in cinematography, it's, it's a bit complicated. I love doing both. I enjoy doing both, and I still do cinematography with the spirit of photography. And when I'm doing photography, I do it as a cinematographer, I, 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 as a cinema. I, I want this one frame, not 24 frame multiplied by seconds, multiplied by minutes, but I want this frame to tell the story. If I did it, I'm successful. If I'm not, if I did it, I'm not. I mean, it's, it's I learned this hard way in uh, 2012 and 13 when I was reporting to CNN. They, I was shooting clashes and uh, protests and marches and a lot of like very powerful moments. And we only accepted 10 votes. If you shoot 1 million in the photo say, we'll just accept 10 votes. If you are very, very capable photographer or something, or photojournalist or whatever reporter, you will, you will deliver the, the whole thing, the whole day, you, you will summarize and you will deliver the, the thing in one photo. The more you talk, the more you, 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 you give photos, the weaker every photo will be. Have you ever watched a movie like, there is movies like Lawrence of Arabia, it's four hours, it's masterpiece. But I bet that any of you have watched it, it's, and it's very nice, but do you remember how many times you watched, I watched Cinema Paradiso countless numbers, but you cannot watch uh, very long, especially when this, this time, with attention span like a fly, we, 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 we are getting used to reads, and that's 15 seconds. We are not having that kind of patience to, sorry, I, I went away, but still photography for me is, is the basic. I don't, I don't know if any cinematographer there out there is, is not thinking about the frame. That frame, with whatever lighting, whatever composition, that, that, that frame, and the next frame, and the next frame, and the next frame. The, uh, for me, it's, it's photography studio. For the first, photography means like, uh, drawing with light. And back in the days, and I have some photos here in my mobile and in this laptop, but I was really good in a rush. Uh, back in the days, in the early days of the cinema, there is no such a thing, uh, such a thing as cinematographer. It was photographed by. It, it was photography, and still now, still up until now, it's director of photography. So photography is the basic. Switching from photography, a lot of uh, my mentors, uh, Stanley Kubrick, for example, he used to be a photographer for Look magazine. He. He started at 17, I think, and he shot like 7,000 7, photos. And after this, he just uh, be became semi. I have a lot of photos here, but uh, <laughs> the dog. The thing is, after, uh, after some time, you will find this medium enough to express yourself, or you need. Expanded medium. I think photography is. Photography has no sound. Photography has no poetry. You can you can embody these things, but photography lacks what cinema has. Cinema has like you, you need. You you can the 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 thing. This film, for example, this is a documentary, a French documentary, very, very interesting thing. It was shot on analog, 
black and white, and it's photo montage, totally. Have you ever watched this film? You can, it's, it's on Google, it, uh, you can see it in Yahoo, in YouTube, sorry, and it's all photos. That's what I'm telling you. Photography is the basic. You can build from photography to photography. And you can, if this answer suits you all now. And, and, and lighting wise, do you, do you think is it easier to light in photography or in cinematography when it comes to. This is lighting? very tricky. I love it. I love this question because I, I keep asking myself. Because in, in uh, photography days, my photography days, I used to have the strobes. The strobes, the, this kind of uh, flash or study lighting, you calculate it in your mind. You don't see it. In cinema, what you see is what you get. You are already seeing the, the lighting and what you see in the loop, in the eye, in the viewfinder or whatever, the monitor, is what, what will you get. And now you have monitors and you have light on the camera and you have post-production and you can shoot raw and you can manipulate this photo forever. But in photography, back in the days, it's very limited thing. And the, the good photographer can make a good cinematographer. But the one that came on this era thinking that the camera can do the job, it's never the camera. Everyone has a baby, he can unlock the mobile <laughs> the button. He can make a good food, but the the lighting is is your brush. You are an artist. So it's photographs drawing with light. So if you are, if you, if you if you will do something not doesn't have a meaning, not meaningful, meaningless, I will not feel anything. And you can be lying to yourself before you are lying to me. Some photos are like yeah, if you saw this photo you will feel something. You will feel this this look is for someone there's some intimacy in this. And this is very bizarre for me. It's very dystopian. Just for lighting and composition. And even this without color. We didn't talk about color, we didn't talk about the we didn't talk about anything. Now it's just like this. I want to show you that uh, the thing that I'm talking about, this man here. I think this photo was uh, Stanley Kubrick here was a lot, a lot older than he started. He started as a photographer in, uh, in the 15 second here, I think. Here he was like 18, 19, 20s. He started as a photographer. And this experience added to his films. For me, Stanley Kubrick is the film director that I hardly can find a film that looks alike another film for him. He, 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 like, he goes to Odyssey, Space Odyssey, he goes to Eyes Wide Shot, he goes to yeah, different genre. This, all of these trying, all of these are visually distinctive. He, he has very, very visually, and, and he, he loves to operate camera. That's why he, he is familiar with the camera, I think, here. Here he was shooting uh, very Lindon, I think. And Stanley Kubrick, because of his background of photography, he, he, uh, in Barry Lindon, there's a, this a movie, uh, if you are familiar with it, it's, it's about uh, 18th century, I think, and there is no source of light, there is no electricity. He insisted to light all the film with candles and torches, and there, there was no movies or films, sorry, and films fast enough to capture this. So he ordered lens manufacturer to make a very fast and wide open, wide aperture lenses specifically for this film to tell this story because his photographic experience but if he didn't know about the aperture shutter speed and the film speed and he will just come, leave the let the director of photography light the thing and it will not be very it will not be standing over kind of things other question.
this is very good, right? Very good? Are you good? No one can uh, give us help to just the AC or something. I have a lot of points here, but I really don't like to impose. There is also Carlos Saur, if you are familiar with this, he's very uh, He's a Spanish family, and he used to be a photographer also. And I have something to tell you about. Where are you publishing your work? I do on YouTube and so on. Nice. Mostly mm -hmm. social media. Social media. Yeah. When it comes to actual like photos, we're missing films, uh, and we're publishing pictures or sending them to festivals. Uh, I have something to talk about social media. Thank you. Uh, you know the director of photography of uh, Gravity, Birdman, the Revenant? This man, his uh, chief, he, he was sitting on the same desk with Rieto and uh, in Mexico. This, this man has three Oscars. Three Oscars. In a row. Birdman, Revenant, and uh, Gravity. This cinematographer has like 20,000 people on Instagram. Maybe 20, I don't know. I don't know now she will. <laughs> how many people. But if you check like any videographer video in the back, he can have like 2 million people. It's, it's, it, it, the thing is, don't believe the social media about the, the true value of the artist. True value of the art. Social media is important to maybe to network, but the thing is, and uh, I keep talking to Hassan about this, uh, it's important. The thing is, it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's about networking here in this market. It's about networking. But Social media can give you two false and very toxic things and very harmful. The, 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 the feeling of that you are uh, connected because a lot of people are liking your, uh, your work and you are not getting that much of contacts, jobs, a lot of fans, but the potential clients are not that, are not met, the numbers doesn't match. And the other thing, it gives you this instant gratification that I take the photo now, I upload it, and I got the feedback. Plus, in film, we can shoot the film 2016, and we can see it 2020, 22. The, the delayed, the more delayed the gratification, usually the, the, the greater the, the outcome. But the thing is, when you are used to this instant gratification, you will, you will not have this kind of patience to do something that lives. For me, the only thing that differentiates art and social media posts, time. Still now we are watching Cinema Pradesh, still now we are watching uh, Citizen Kane, we are, watch we are watching Mona Lisa Da Vinci. Because Art is time to move. Social media is for daily consumption, like, okay, scroll, 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 scroll. Mm -hmm. So it's not a place to trust your abilities. It's not a place to trust your content, because it's not a pl it's safe place for archiving. Today, Instagram is welcoming photos. Tomorrow, or actually today, is not welcoming, you know, it's a uh, read. Mm -hmm. We are not shooting anymore 16 by 9, we are shooting 9 by 16. It's, it's insane because he, he is trying to follow TikTok and he is losing, losing, losing. And the, the new generation is 100% TikTok and maybe we are older a little bit. I'm not talking about you, Adam. Adam is sleeping with TikTok. Adam. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the social media. I know maybe no one will, will not like my, my approach on this, but. You are not active. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not active. She, she asked me to, to, to post this. Uh, this um, masterclass or seminar on my Instagram, 
I used to have like 80,000 people on Instagram, now it's 70 something, and uh, I don't use it anymore. And I find it very interesting because uh, I used to be a, a celebrity photographer. I showed a lot of celebrities. I have a lot of followers and blah, blah, blah. But the numbers doesn't add. Uh, the jobs are not the same as I imagined. And, uh, and the very big toxic thing that you are consuming more than you are producing. This is fate. You are watching a lot, a, lot, a lot, and you are producing very, very less because you, are, you have only 24 hours per day and you are even scrolling or shooting your own thing. And for me, I, I reach a, a peak of like 9, 10 hours per day of screen time. And I was just finding this to myself that I'm getting inspired, I'm getting updated, and I'm following the trends and all of this garbage. And once I quit to watch and compare what other people are doing, I started to focus on my craft and I'm better off. For, me, for myself, I'm better off. I'm uploading my work on Vimeo for videos and for, uh, on Behance for photography uh, projects. I'm not missing that kind of actions and reactions between fans because I love them, and, uh, but Back in the day, yeah, by the end of the day, the, the, the one who is paying your bill, they are not your fans, or friends, or family, or whatever. The, the client. And usually in this, from photography to cinematography, who is hiring a cinematographer? Production house. Agents. Uh, Universal, Paramount, whatever. Producer, is that the producer? They are not, usually, they are not picking their DPs or cinematographers from social media. It's, I don't know about the, the small jobs or something, but they are not picking people from, based on their fans, the numbers, based on their, a lot of things, their, um, their body of work, their uh, manners on set, their background, academic background, it's very important. One thing I, I just want to add about documentary. Mm -hmm. Social media for me is very important for documentation, for daily challenges, for 365 days of whatever. It's fine to, to practice. I, I love that quote from uh, that French photographer. I'm, I'm Egyptian and my first language is Arabic and second is English and French is... Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> this man said that your worst photos are the very first 10,000. 10,000. You have to shoot 10,000 bad photos to reach to your best photos. So, for social media, I have like 4,000 posts. The very, very first ones are like cat on the street. Oh my god, it's orange. Wow, it's looking at me. Okay, till presidents and blah blah blah. But, but you have to practice. There is a huge difference between documentation and uh, fiction. I mean, the docu documentary usually strict to the reality, to the drama of life. You are not. You are not. Telling people what to do in front of the camera. In, 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 the, in my favorite kind of documentary. But some people are doing it, docudrama or whatever. But to have this integrity with documentation, you have to be fly on the way. A lot of my favorite documentaries are like, what the hell, what they are saying, what they are doing. They, they forgot totally about there is a camera shooting them. You can do this kind of documentation with the street photography and post it on social media. Street photography is every day. Every day I'm taking the bus, going home, going to work, and I see these people with bikes, I see some drilling everywhere in the web, there is some drilling. <laughs> so I, I see a lot of faces. I love portraits, I love street photography. And, and social media usually give me this kind of Okay, uh, I will show the people that the things that I see. 
Because the thing is, you see things differently than this, differently than Adam. Adam is dreaming already. So it's me. <laughs> you, you, you would see things differently. So you can share it, you can show it to us, you can show it because back in the days there were like if you are a photojournalist you can publish in newspaper or magazine, you can say. But not, not, not anymore. The, the, the printed uh, newspapers are not anymore. So we have social media, everyone can. It, it, this is a plus, this is a pro and con, but this pro about social media, everyone can show the people, show the world what what is beautiful, what is important for them. Do you have any questions about yeah, please. Do. I have a lot actually. Yeah. I've been in print media since thirty years. Alright. So um, I know exactly what you mean about the print closing enthusiasm. But because I do I was a reporter. Alright. Okay, and I moved from local business, business <laughs> reporting. Yeah. So I do believe in storytelling in that way, factual storytelling of issues, yeah. which we do not usually tell, sorry, in the entire region. True, you know? I'm from Egypt. I am from Egypt, <laughs> yeah. so I know that. <laughs> so I really do not know where to start from. Like, I read lots of books on yeah. documentary journalism. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, um, documentary journalism, even on uh, online journalism for documentaries. I read everything about scripts, I'm reading a lot. But I don't know where to start from. I do believe, like you say, it's, we also learn this even when as reporters, you have to write whatever you know, you believe, and feel. If, it's, if you feel an issue, yeah. know it and believe in it, you'll do it well. Yeah. And Another thing, like the print media, they tell you you have to learn the ABCs, starting from reporting to the production of the magazine, the, even the yeah. website, because yeah. I do online journalism now. So I want to learn the entire process, and I don't know where to start from. I am not like these guys, they're professional than me. I'm an ignorant photographer. I only used to go out on assignments with photography. But I, but I decided if I want to go into documentary filmmaking, and mostly short documentary filmmaking, I need to learn the entire process. Otherwise, I'm sorry, script writing is not enough. You have to know what are you doing to be able to do it right. So, so this is my question. I don't know where to start from. Okay. And where to study. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I, I have a similar uh, thing. Where to start from? The thing is, as long as you have a feeling of this story, I can connect, I can relate to. <coughs> I'm working now on a documentary, and this documentary sometimes my main character is a little child, about six years old, and he has a syndrome, and I just follow him wherever he is. So, Sometimes he is at home, I can bring my old stuff, big cameras, equipment, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes he's in, in a mall and I, I only have my wife also. You, you can start with your feelings, how, how you want to tell the story. Sometimes for me, the very polished, polished uh, image of whatever BBC, BBC by the way ended uh, their broadcast, I think, not anymore, there is no BBC for uh, rating. This uh, just me knew this. This is very really bad news because I yeah, was raised in a house that yeah. BBC was something. But the way, uh, Al Jazeera, BBC, whatever, this push, this very well neat, uh, well lit, the composition of talking head, this man was. Ah. I don't like it. Yeah, it's, it's, it, I don't believe it. Some. You you watch on Netflix some of these documentaries on well, this format. I don't, I don't. I don't. Simply, I don't. I don't find the true, the truth in, in this kind of staged yes. interview. If you are interviewing a housewife that she lost her job or lost her husband, and you will bring her to the studio and make her go to the wardrobe and dress her, not like herself, and make her a makeup. Just not like herself. <laughs> she will tell a story I will not believe.
But if you follow this housewife to her village, to her house, to her kitchen, and you interviewed her, and she is camera shy, I'm sure she is camera shy, and the camera is on her hands cooking something, then I will believe you. But the, the, the start point is when you forget about the know how the, the rules. The start point is when you follow your heart because the technicalities are everywhere. I'm the, worried about the technicalities. No, no, no. The good, the good, by the way, a lot of, a lot of brilliant documentaries were shot on uh, shaky camera and uh, very shaky uh, home camcorder and still the story is gripping. The, 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 if you, you are Egyptian, you are, are you familiar with Tahani Roshan's work? She is like a goddess for, for us. You can Google Tahani Roshan. She, the, um, Bernard Bull, the, the, those girls, she made a very beautiful documentary about the girls of the streets. They are sleeping on the, the bridges in Egypt, slums, and it's very, very gripping and unforgettable documentary. And the camera she used was like, if you saw this picture now, you, you, you will, what? Your mobile is way better. This mobile is way better than this camera. But the, the story, the story, if you, if you feel something towards this girl, that shows you the, find the story first. And you will find someone who will help you. As a cameraman, you can operate. If you cannot operate yourself, you can bring someone that can operate. I want to learn. You can, you can, and actually, I envy the woman because you have something that we don't have. You have eye for beauty that we, this sense of feminine beauty that we don't have. This intimacy, you can get close enough. You can feel some things that, as men, we are not. We are very rigid usually. And strict into the rules and like lighting must be key light, fill light, kicker, back light, and this composition and this framing. No, no, put the visit. You are free. You are. You have a very, very huge bliss that you are not. You don't have to unlearn something. We have to unlearn a lot of things that we got through the through the way to do something unique. To do something is ours. Something is that what I feel, not what I've been told. Education is very important, but don't lose your inner voice. Your inner voices will bring your taste, your fingerprint. That thing that the thing is that mobile phone or whatever this thing. If uh, Ram or uh, Sam. Or Kyle didn't attend to the work that day, his colleague and other colleagues will assemble this table. But Cinema Pradesu or Mona Lisa or whatever, there is no two Da Vinci's, one Da Vinci. There is only Giuseppe Tornatore, there, there is only one Tarantino. Uh, my time is up. I'm sorry. No <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry, but uh, I think my final thing, be yourself. The technicalities will come the way. Don't, don't be some, someone else or something else because of the trend or the client or whatever. Be yourself and search for the people that they want and need your stuff. Because if you are making something Netflix doesn't, didn't want, who is in will want? Check will want. If this client didn't like your work, another client will like your work. If you like to shoot black and white, don't go to the people that love colors. If you shoot or love shooting 16 by 9, don't go to the people that love 9 by 16. Stick to your own thing that, tell the story that you know with your own taste. I'm so sorry, I know how it is. I hope it was uh, worth your while, guys.
انت طالع في الصوره دي؟